if previously you took a course, again, I'm thinking EC254 here, but it could be an equivalent of some sort or an operating systems course to cover this, then you already know about the cash misses stuff and you really don't need it recapped uh, here, uh, in which case you could probably skip this. But if you wanted a catch up, uh, a refresher, if this is new to you, then here we are. Um, the CPU generates a memory address for any read or write operation, and that address is mapped to a page. Uh, pages are just chunks of memory. Um, and ideally, whatever page we are looking for is found in the cache. Uh, that is to say, it's available um, in a quicker way, you know, close at hand. If the page is found in the cache, we call that a cache hit, otherwise it is a cache miss. Uh, and doing a load from memory in the event of a miss is of course a comparatively slow operation, uh, and we would prefer not to do it unless we have to, and you know, that happens when we have a miss. Um, so to calculate uh, how well we're doing, we can figure out effectively what is the average time to get some data if we know a few things. Um, we have to know the hit ratio, that is how often the thing that we're looking for is found in the cache, uh, and uh, also measurements for how long it takes to load data from cache versus how long to load from memory. Uh, and if we have all those things, then uh, we can use our formula that looks like this. The effective access time formula is H, the hit ratio, so what percentage of the time we successfully, uh, uh, successfully find what we need in the cache, uh, computed as a value, a fraction between 0 and 1, times T sub C, the time required to load a page from cache, uh, and then 1 minus H, the, when we miss, uh, the time required to go get it from memory, uh, as T sub M. Sounds good. Um, obviously, we want the hit ratio to be as high as possible. In the ideal situation, we never miss. Uh, and if that happens, then, of course, there are no problems. Because we don't have to ever go to memory. Unrealistic. Would be nice. Unrealistic. Okay. Now, uh, Intel and AMD 64-bit CPUs tend to have level 1, 2, and 3 caches, with L1 being the smallest uh, and L3 being the largest. Uh, now, of course, these are not to scale at all in the diagram. Uh, they are dramatically different uh, when it comes to actually what is going on. Um, if, if we look at, say, uh, the specification of uh, a modern, uh, modern CPU, um, we end up with, you know, the level 1 cache is uh, 512k, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, the level 2 cache uh, ends up being uh, about 3 megabytes, uh, and then the level 3 cache ends up being about 32 megabytes. Uh, and this is a, a Ryzen 5600X, just for the sake of an example. Uh, and so obviously those things are super not to scale. You know, level 3 cache is 10 times the size of the level 2 cache. Uh, and the level 2 cache uh, is, uh, again, much bigger than level 1. Uh, and main memory will be whatever RAM you have in the machine. So you know, 16, 32, 64 gigabytes, it's a lot. Um, in any case... Um, what we'll see is that uh, when the CPU wants some data, it will send out, this is the information I'm looking for. Uh, if it is found in the level one cache, we get it back fastest. Uh, and if not, it goes on to look at level two. If level two contains it, it will be copied into level one on its way to the CPU. Uh, otherwise, check level three. And if it's not there, then again, we go to main memory. Um, so, in a video uh, that's linked, uh, alternate version of this lecture, uh, it says 5% miss rates uh, are uh, dominating performance. Let's look at why. So here's reported cache misses for a uh, spec uh, CPU 2000 and 2006 benchmarks. Uh, and here are the miss rates. So um, a lot of CPUs have separate instruction and data caches for level 1. So there's L1D. Uh, which is uh, the data cache, uh, and L1i, instruction cache. Uh, and the uh, miss rate we see is out of every 1,000 instructions, 40 miss in level 1, uh, and uh, about 4 
uh, out of a thousand miss in level two. So if we assume that the uh, cash miss penalty for level one is five and the level two miss penalty is 300 cycles, we'll pretend there's no level three cash in this scenario. Then for every instruction, we expect a running time of, on average, 1 plus 0 0.04 uh, times 5 plus 0 0.004 times 300 for an average of 2.4 cycles to complete every instruction. Misses are expensive. Misses are very, very expensive in this regard, right? You know, it would normally take one cycle to execute, but on average it actually takes more than double the amount of time. Um, now, if you are dealing with a system that has a hard drive, then we have to bring in uh, our terms TC and, uh, and TM and replace them with TM and TD, TM being memory and D from disk. Uh, and uh, we'll also have a redefinition of H as P, the fraction of the time that a particular page is in memory. Uh, and so the effective access time in virtual memory is P times the time to retrieve from memory plus one minus P times the time to retrieve from disk. Um, obviously you can combine these equations. So if you're actually fetching some data, uh, if we have one level of cache, just to keep the equation relatively simple and fitting on the screen here, uh, then it is the hit rate times the time to get it from the cache plus what is the chance that we miss uh, times the chance we find it in memory times the time it's in memory plus the chance it's on disk times the time it retrieves uh, from disk. We can measure this TD if we're so inclined. Unfortunately, uh, slow as a snail. Uh, the amount of time it takes to load from disk is really, really bad. Uh, a typical hard drive may have a latency of three milliseconds seek time. This is you know, a, a magnetic spinning hard drive kind of thing. Uh, and uh, transfer time is pretty quick. Uh, and that's many, many orders of magnitude larger than any of the other costs. Uh, and we might also have to contend with the fact that the device is in use. So there could be requests ahead of you in line making your, uh, making your thing take longer. Uh, and so if we have an actual magnetic hard drive, then really that's the most important thing in the equation. Uh, it really dominates the effective access time. You could roughly estimate it uh, in nanoseconds as uh, the chance we have to go to disk times about 8 million. Um, and so if the page fault rate is high, performance is really awful because disk absolutely dominates everything when it comes to uh, executing your code. In conclusion, misses are very expensive. They hurt performance really quite a lot. I doubt very much anybody has a magnetic drive in their laptop at this point, but ultimately, if you were looking to speed up an old machine for some reason, you, know, you uh, have a family member who has an old computer and uh, it's very slow and it doesn't have a solid state drive, that is really one of the f best things that you could do to speed it up uh, because you know, cutting down... Uh, the time to read from disk really makes a huge, incredible difference. Um, when uh, when SSDs were released um, a few years ago, uh, the change was you know, a revelation compared to what had happened before with you know, the 7200 RPM drives. Uh, there's, there's really just no comparison. So I hope that gives you a, a better understanding of what goes on with uh, cache misses and why they matter and why we want to avoid them so much.